The White Sox took two of three in Atlanta, winning their first series on the road since early June against the Yankees. After a rough start on Friday, the White Sox brought the offense as Jake Berger and Luis Robert Jr. remembered how to elevate the baseball. Another unfortunate injury for Aloy Jimenez and another unfortunate outing for Michael Kopech. Does a series win in Atlanta change your opinion about the White Sox or does it just complicate things even further? You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome back to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sox. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Just search Locked on White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay guaranteed fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore a GGTB. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Our Chicago White Sox will take on the New York Mets on Tuesday uh, in New York. Lucas Giolito will be on the hill. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. How about it? State of the Sox. Uh, They are 40 and 55. Eight games back in the AL Central. Uh, but what a weekend it was for the Southsiders. White Sox took two of three uh, from the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Uh, aside from the 30-something pitches that Michael Kopech threw on Friday night and the uh, Shaw experience in that game, one of the series, uh, it was a pretty solid weekend for the White Sox against the best team uh, in baseball in their building uh, right after the all-star break. Um, So uh, is this a situation where uh, you don't get up for the letdown? Uh, Have we been hurt way too many times? Is this just too small of a sample size to get excited about the White Sox? Uh, I asked the question on Twitter, which is not always the best place to have your uh, conversations, but uh, that's what we have. And that's what I did. Uh, I asked the question before, Before Sunday's game even started, uh, if the White Sox take the series uh, against the Atlanta Braves on Sunday afternoon, you will be feeling blank uh, about the White Sox. And I had, uh, you know, well over 100 responses, close to 150 responses. And I'm telling you, I tried to go through as many as I possibly could. I, I think I got through all of them. I would say 98%, maybe 95%. Uh, of the folks that got back to me, uh, feeling apathetic, feeling bland, feeling like mm, a series win in Atlanta doesn't really do much uh, for my uh, perspective on what the White Sox should potentially do uh, in the excitement for the remainder of the season, especially up until the trade deadline. Uh, the White Sox started the weekend eight games back, and despite winning the series, uh, they are still eight games back. The reliance on other factors uh, and the ability to play not just average baseball, not just mediocre baseball, but near-perfect baseball for a long stretch uh, is not impossible, but highly improbable uh, for this White Sox squad. Uh, You know, Grafol said... And it's been made famous, and he's probably not the first one at all 
uh, to say it in the organization. But uh, Grafol said, you know, you can't win a pennant uh, in April or May, but you sure can lose one. And the White Sox starting 7-21 and is just proof that every game matters, especially uh, at the beginning of the year. This White Sox team had to win on the margins, and they've lost. Uh, so many of those one, two run games, those are the type of games uh, they needed. Uh, they needed to just pile up those wins uh, early on. Uh, they, they fell in such a hole. And again, a, a small sample size in Atlanta. Who knows what's going to happen in New York? Uh, but you not only have to be playing amazing baseball, you got to have a lot of luck with all the teams ahead of you, especially uh, the Minnesota Twins. So on Sunday, uh, White Sox took care of business 8-1 against the Braves. Uh, it was not all good for the Sox on Sunday, though. Uh, White Sox right fielder Aloy Jimenez left the team's victory uh, against the Braves uh, Sunday with a left groin tightness. Uh, he is being further evaluated on Monday and could be out four or five days, uh, manager Pedro Grafol said. Uh, he'll get some tests done, and we'll see, Grafol said. I wouldn't expect him in the next few days for sure, uh, but I don't want to jump the gun on anything. But right now, it doesn't look good for the next four or five days, uh, but we'll see what comes of it on Monday. So, you know, even if Aloy Jimenez uh, is not out there in right field and he's just DHing and he's trying to a leg out, a double play, which I think that is what uh, the situation was on Sunday. Just the act of doing anything physical, and in this situation, running to first base can cause problems. We've seen it before uh, from Aloy Jimenez, and uh, uh, just unfortunate, again, uh, you know, I know there's been that label that he's not injury prone, but I mean, the proof is out there. Hopefully, it is not too bad, uh, and he can uh, return maybe uh, by the weekend series against the Twins. Uh, Dylan Cease was on the hill on Sunday. His final line, uh, five innings, which is kind of typical of Dylan Cease. Uh, three hits, one earned run, uh, three walks, six strikeouts. Uh, did not give up a home run. Uh, 4.18 is his ERA. He threw 99 pitches, uh, only giving up three hits to an offense like the Braves. Uh, that is absolutely commendable. They are a tough team. I mean, it just feels like uh, they can pile it on quickly. We saw that uh, on Friday. Uh, after Dylan Cease on Sunday, it was Lopez, Bummer, Schultens. Uh, bullpen just allowed two hits, uh, zero walks, which is great, uh, and six strikeouts. Sox pitching altogether held Atlanta to just five hits on Sunday. Uh, this was Cease after the game. Our bats were there. We played great defense. Our pitching was solid. It's one of those series that shows the kind of talent we have exactly, Dylan Cease. That's what makes this so frustrating. We see this, and we're like, okay, this was the White Sox team we were hoping for for a majority of the season so far. Uh, what happened in that Oakland series? What happened to the Kansas City Royals way back in May? And I could go on and on. You've watched it yourself. You were saying the same things, I bet. Where was this White Sox team uh, for so many other instances? Here they are playing the best team in baseball. Is this a situation of the White Sox just rising uh, to the challenge of a great team like Atlanta? Uh, it sure felt like that. Sox offense on Sunday, eight runs, 14 hits. Uh, Berger with his 21st bomb of the year. And Luis Robert Jr. hit number 27. Uh, Andres with a double. Sox were five for nine with runners uh, in scoring position. Uh, Sox scored four runs in the second against Braves starter Colby Allard. Uh, Luis Robert Jr. was four for five with three RBIs. Uh, it just shows we can play with anybody, Pedro Grafol said. Uh, you never know what's going to happen in this game. You do know what's going to happen if you don't play hard and you don't prepare. You're going to get your ass kicked. Uh, but as far as the schedule is concerned and you and who you are playing and where you're playing, you've just got to prepare to play and go play. Uh, leave it all on the field. That's all you can do. For me, that's probably the best team in baseball. They don't have any weaknesses, in my opinion. It's a good series for us. 
Uh, some injury updates that uh, we got before Sunday's game and throughout the weekend. Uh, Joe Kelly threw a bullpen and said he expects to return from the injured list uh, the day he's eligible to come off. That's Thursday against the Mets. And Yoan Mankata, remember him? Uh, he began an injury rehab stint on July 14th with uh, AAA Charlotte, continuing great progress made over the last two weeks. The length of Mankata's rehab will be determined as he goes. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing uh, how he's doing, Grafal said of Mankata, how he feels looking forward to having him back. Uh, Michael Kopech looked absolutely lost in the series opener, and Jake Berger got to a milestone marker before T.A. got off the ground, uh, taking uh, all that in stride, I guess. More on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Uh, Want to win 100 times your money on daily fantasy baseball? Sleeper is now offering up to 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests, choose any player as eight players uh, that you like and pick more or less on your favorite baseball stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right. You could win a big. Do you think Jake Berger can hit a home run on Tuesday against Carlos Carrasco? Uh, well, we sure do. And on Sleeper, you can swing for the fences with up to 100 times your payout. All you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stat categories like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right, and you could win big. Use promo code LOCKDOWN, and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. The White Sox face off against the New York Mets on Tuesday. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. So let's go back. I don't want to, but we have to. We've got to go back to Friday, the series opener. First game after the long all-star break. Uh, Michael Kopech starting out of the gates for the White Sox against the best team in baseball. That was definitely a choice. Uh, made by Pedro Grafol and the White Sox organization. Remember, uh, Kopech was shut down uh, well before the All-Star break. Uh, Pedro Grafol, uh, you said he was grinding through some starts, which didn't sound good. Uh, Kopech uh, did not have some favorable outings at all before he was shut down. And I thought maybe the rest was going to help, but the way they situated things, I don't know if Kopech was the uh, best uh, choice, and it proved that. Uh, Kopech went two-thirds of an inning on Friday, gave up one hit, four walks. Again, two-thirds of an inning, four walks, four earned runs, uh, zero strikeouts, a home run. It was a grand slam, his ERA 4.47. Uh, this is what Michael Kopech said after the game. They had one good swing, uh, Kopech said, referring to his wildness, taking the Braves' potent bats out of their hands. Difference maker for my outing, that grand slam. Uh, Olsen is a good hitter. He's already got 30. I'm sure he'll continue to have a good year. Yeah, that was uh, some analysis from Michael Kopech. Uh, one swing uh, was all that was possible. Uh, Kopech could not find the plate. Nothing was in the zone. Atlanta Braves, a very patient team. They weren't going to swing at stuff that was three feet behind them or two feet above them. Uh, he wasn't effectively wild. He was just wild. So seemingly the only pitch he got in the zone, it was crushed by Olsen for a grand slam. Uh, Kopech walked Acuna Jr., hit Ozzy uh, Albies uh, with a pitch and walked Austin Riley before Olsen unloaded on a 1-0 inside fastball, uh, driving it 430 feet to right center. So Kopech's last five starts, uh, rough. Two-thirds of an inning, uh, four innings, four innings, four and a third, and five innings. Again, it is 2023, uh, late July, and we still really do not know what we have with Michael Kopech. You say maybe uh, Michael Kopech is best used out of the bullpen, perhaps, but if you can't throw strikes when you're coming out of the bullpen, what good are you there? I, I don't know where he can fit right now. He's a bit of a head case. 
he seems lost. Uh, I, I don't know. Him and uh, uh, Ethan Katz need to get into that Katz laboratory and figure some things out. Uh, however, Tuki Toussaint was excellent on Friday. He came in for relief five and a third innings, uh, three hits, one earned run, four walks, four strikeouts. Uh, he's got another start coming up, actually. I believe it's in the Mets series. And folks, I would not be surprised if you see Tuki Toussaint in your 2024 Chicago White Sox starting rotation. Uh, Shaw out of the bullpen struggled as well on Friday, two thirds of an inning. Uh, four hits, four earned runs, and a walk. Uh, White Sox offense, zero runs, five hits, all singles, uh, grounded into four double plays to kick off the weekend. It's a tough league when you're hitting ground balls, Pedro Grifol said. Uh, we have to find a way to elevate the baseball. Again, uh, outstanding analysis from our fearless leader, Pedro Grifol. Uh, Saturday, different story. White Sox took down the Braves 6-5. Uh, now, when hired, this is what Pedro Grifol said way back in the fall. Here are some of the things you can expect from the 2023 White Sox, Grifol said after getting the job. We will communicate. We will be fundamentally sound. We will play with passion, pride for this uniform. We will respect the game, our fans, and earn their trust. We will be prepared to control the strike zone on both sides of the ball. We will work hard and play winning baseball every night. We will definitely hold each other accountable. Personally, I'm going to be a stickler for the preparation, the energy. It's going to get us where we want to go. These guys are going to come to play every single night. Ah, so this is what Pedro Grifol said prior to Saturday's game uh, after that rough loss uh, in the opener. Uh, this was from Daryl Van Scoven of the Chicago Sun-Times. Grifol saying, we're not as detailed as I want us to be. We're not as focused as I want to be. Those are things we have got to get better at. Pretty simple. That starts with me. I'm responsible for that, and we have to continue to address it. I have to address it with our coaches, and we have to pass it on to our players, and we will all have to hold each other accountable. Well, Sox took care of business on Saturday, and they did as Sunday as well. I guess better late than never to start uh, doing that, Pedro Grifol. Uh, White Sox in the third inning, runners at the corner, nobody out on Saturday. Uh, Zavala struck out, but then Andrew Benatendi flipped the third single of the game into short left field, first run of the series for the White Sox. It was quickly 1-0. Uh, Luis Robert Jr. did something similar, got past Rosario. He was having a, a tough day, and two more runs scored 3 nothing Sox. But then bottom third, Lynn gave it all back. Solo home run by Rosario, making up for some of that defense. A two-run bomb, then Acuna Jr. tie game. Man, Acuna Jr. is fun to watch in the baseball. Uh, but White Sox bounced back, added runs in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. A Graveman wavered but did not break. Speaking of breaking, it was a broken bat double play orchestrated by a perfectly placed Tim Anderson to end the game. Uh, Lynn's final line, five and a third innings, uh, six hits, four earned runs, three walks, six strikeouts, a couple of home runs. His ERA still over six, 6.06. Uh, Lynn after the game, that's a good team from top to bottom, a deep lineup. Uh, they'll foul some balls off. They'll leave the ballpark if you make a mistake. Uh, made a couple of mistakes tonight, and they were able to capitalize on those with the two home runs. But all in all, I was able to make enough pitches to where it didn't get out of hand. Uh, yeah, that, that's a theme. A, a good team, and we've seen this several times, especially with Lynn on the mound. Uh, when you make mistakes to good teams, they will make you pay. And uh, Atlanta showed that on Saturday. Uh, Berger hit his 20th home run on Saturday, made it to 20 before Tim Anderson hit his first home run. That, to me, is unbelievable. I would have lost a lot of money taking that kind of bet at the beginning of the year. There's no way I would have thought Jake Berger, who didn't even make the team right out of camp, uh, would have hit 20 home runs before Tim Anderson, now 21, uh, but you get the picture before Tim Anderson hit his first home run. Uh, this was Grafal after Saturday's game. We beat a pretty damn good pitcher today and a, a really damn good team. Uh, I'm proud of these guys, the way they played. They played hard. They were detailed, and they played to win 
today. So, Sax fans, we got two weeks until the trade deadline. Is it just a foregone conclusion that the White Sox will sell, or can they change their fate, especially this coming week against the Mets? Uh, more on that in a moment. Should our White Sox, should the front office just burn it all down or maybe just retool? Can you buy and sell? Should you just buy or should you just completely sell it all? Uh, get to see what some of these young guys can do and uh, uh, hope for a successful <laughs> a successful 2023 20, offseason and a, a solid 2024 season and probably another winnable AL Central division. Well, this was Jim Bowden in The Athletic a few days ago. Strictly metaphorically speaking, of course, but if I had to put my money on one selling team to be the star of the trade deadline, it would be the White Sox. They have three starting pitchers whom several contenders want, including soon-to-be free agents Lucas Giolito and Lance Lynn and Dylan Cease, who is under team control through 2025. The White Sox can dangle relievers such as Kendall Graveman, Ronaldo Lopez, and Kenyon Middleton, too. In addition, they could move Tim Anderson, although he has one more year of team control. Uh, the two-time All-Star might be a good fit for the Giants or Dodgers, who both need to upgrade at shortstop. Uh, so Lucas Giolito and Lance Lynn seem to be getting mentioned quite a bit. I mean, those are the two names I am hearing uh, all the time. We talked about the Dodgers connection with Lucas Giolito last week. Uh, seems like the Cincinnati Reds are interested in Giolito, maybe even Lance Lynn, the Texas Rangers, uh, interested in Lance Lynn. I don't know if his last outing helped him or not. Uh, but again, I, may, maybe teams have already kind of made up their mind uh, and they're like, this is a guy we absolutely need to help us eat some innings to get down the stretch. Uh, Giolito, a different story. Looking forward to seeing what he can do against the Mets. I think Giolito is just showcasing with every start he has uh, going forward. Uh, here's a bizarre one. What if the White Sox sold Jake Berger while his stock is so high right now? Yohan Mankata, it sounds like, is going to come back eventually. And I honestly, I don't know. I don't necessarily believe this should happen, but I think this will happen is Yohan Mankata is going to go right back in there at third base, hitting fifth or sixth in the lineup. And I don't know what's going to happen to Jake Berger. Are they going to try to move him to first and, and capitalize on his offense? Maybe if Aloy Jimenez is continued to be hampered with uh, this injury, maybe Berger gets right back into that DH spot. I don't know. But wouldn't it be weird uh, if some team said, you know what? We like Jake Berger. We like him as an everyday guy, and we see that uh, he can play a huge role with our team for many years to come, and we love what he can do with the bat. I mean, Berger's putting on a show right now. He absolutely is, uh, and it's good to see that from him. Again, I'm always confused of what role does he have in this White Sox team if the Sox continue to go with Yohan Mankata, and I think they will. Uh, Tim Anderson, I mean, would it really be an upgrade for the Giants or the Dodgers with Tim Anderson at shortstop? Maybe, maybe he just needs a scenery change. T.A. was four for 12 in the series in Atlanta with four strikeouts. Uh, still looking again for that first home run. Uh, you know, look, it's exciting. I, I love that the White Sox took two of three from Atlanta. That's fun. It's, it's good to see your team. Uh, play good baseball. Uh, it, you know, Saturday was a little nerve wracking, but Sunday, you know, that was fun to see them put that kind of offense up, uh, especially against Atlanta in their own building. But to me, it's just bittersweet. You know, where was this again in Oakland? Where was it against Kansas City back in May and so many others uh, games and series in between? You know, the failure to put everything together for a sustainable period of time has crippled uh, this team. And it's not just this year, it's other years as well, causing confusion, I think, amongst the front office, the fan base, the players, frustration, a sense of feeling like altogether, you know, this weekend was exciting, but it's a little too late. Uh, Sacks have Monday off, then it's three in New York against the Mets, a very beatable team. So you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, what if they sweep the Mets? And then there's three in Minnesota uh, before returning home to face the Cubs. Uh, White Sox have a lot of interesting decisions to make. Uh, wondering if there's going to be any, any movement 
uh, this coming week uh, with personnel decisions. Folks, thank you so very much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere. You find your podcast. We're on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, our White Sox take on the New York Mets on Tuesday. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM and the SXM app. Search White Sox. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. Hey, everydayers, you know who you are, and I really appreciate it, especially with the way this team has been playing. On the next episode, I will get you ready for potentially uh, one of Lucas Giolito's last starts in a White Sox uniform. Appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.